Welcome to Health Watch, presented by Novant Health. I'm your host, June Baker. Our show features local physicians and health professionals discussing health topics of importance to local residents. On today's show, we will meet Dr. Letty Doran, Brunswick Novant Medical Center's newest hospitalist. We'll then meet Sarah Brown, a family nurse practitioner who has recently joined Brunswick Women's Center. And finally, we will talk with Stephanie Heron about some of the new and exciting things going on at Brunswick Novant Medical Center's emergency department. Stay tuned to learn about valuable health topics with Health Watch. Our first guest today is Dr. Letty Doran of Brunswick Novant Medical Center. Well, welcome to the show today, Dr. Doran. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I'd like to begin by uh, getting to know you a little better and uh, learn about your educational experiences and what have you. Could you share that with our viewers, please? Sure. Um, uh, undergrad was done at Palm Beach Atlantic College in Florida. Mm -hmm. From there, I went to University of Miami for medical school. And after that, I did a residency program in family medicine at North Shore University Hospital in Glen Cove, New York. Wow, you started out where it's really hot and you went where it's really cold. Huh? I know, I did the opposite. <laughs> What's wrong with <laughs> that picture? <laughs> well, I understand that you're new to Brunswick Novant Medical Center. Um, where did you practice prior to coming to uh, the Novant Medical Center? Just prior to practicing at Brunswick Novant, I practiced at Dozier Memorial Hospital as a hospitalist. Mm -hmm. Before that, I was uh, practicing inpatient medicine with North Shore University Hospital at Valley Stream. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, how are you enjoying working at Brunswick Novant Medical Center? I love it. Do you really? Yeah, I do. I do. It's an excellent place to practice medicine. Well, that's great to hear. Um, so you have special training as a hospitalist, am I right? I am board certified in family medicine, mm -hmm. and I have worked in hospitalist medicine for the last several years. Mm -hmm. So as a family practitioner, you take care of folks of all ages, children? In my training, I took care of folks of all ages. Mm -hmm. uh, subsequent to that, I, I focused more on adult medicine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we've had a few of the other hospitalists on the show and on the past shows, but it's been a while. So it might be good to explain to our viewers what a hospitalist actually is and what a hospitalist does. A hospitalist is a physician that primarily focuses on inpatient medicine. Mm -hmm. um, they'll follow the patient from the time they're in the emergency room and admitted through their hospital stay and then discharge them home. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you see patients then exclusively at the hospital? Correct. Mm -hmm. Well, I have heard some comments from community folks about um, the hospital's program and how it fits in with their primary care physician. Um, can we talk a little bit about how that process works? From working on both sides of inpatient yeah. and outpatient medicine, I'll tell you, um, hospitalists free up the primary care provider to provide outpatient care mm -hmm. solely mm -hmm. rather than have to split their time between their their patients in their clinic as well as the hospitalist, mm -hmm. as well as the hospital. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> there are um, several hospitalists at Brunswick Novant Medical Center, correct? Correct. How, how many are there? There are six. Six. Mm -hmm. So theoretically patients could see um, different hospitalists while they're there, depending on the length of their stay. Absolutely. Right? I'm curious about the process that a patient might get admitted to your service. For instance, if a patient was um, presented at the emergency room uh, for whatever, uh, could you walk me through that process of how a patient starts there and gets admitted to um, the unit? Certainly. Um, first, the emergency department physician will evaluate the patient and determine oh. whether or not they require evaluation by a hospitalist. Oh. They'll call the hospitalist. The hospitalist will come down and check out the patient talk with them, take a history, do a physical, check with the, um, the different diagnostic studies that may or may not have been done with the mm -hmm. emergency department, and um, admit them to the hospital. So we'll write orders. They'll go from the emergency department to a hospital room. And then from there, 
they'll get the proper treatment that they require, whether it be antibiotics or heart medicine or mm -hmm. blood pressure medicine. Um, well, does all the um, all the testing happen generally prior to them being admitted to a hospital bed? No, I won't say all the testing happens prior. Mm -hmm. There are certainly times that we admit patients for further testing also. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, what about specialists like, like surgeons? How are they, or maybe urologists, how are they involved in the care of their patients and, and, and in relation to the hospitalist team? Well, um, frequently surgeons or urologists will admit their own patients for their, oh. for their surgery, um, and then we can follow as consult, uh, consultants for mm -hmm. their medical issues. Mm -hmm. um, or we admit medical patients who may need surgery and we'll consult the uh, surgeons at that time. Mm -hmm. So you have a good relationship. You, you, it's easy for that transition between one physician and another, yes. between the yes. surgeon and you as a hospitalist. Well, I'm curious, with so many hospitalists, and I know there's probably a couple on during the day and then one on at night, and as you change um, providers or change shifts, how does that uh, information get uh, transferred from one physician to another? The hospitalist changing shifts will sit down with each other and go over the list of patients that we're carrying at the time mm -hmm. and details regarding the care and what, what management is, is taking place at that time, what mm -hmm. medications they're getting, mm -hmm. how they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and so that occurs at the change of shift? Correct, yes. Now, I think you have um, a nurse uh, that works with you all that... Um, yes, we have Lillian. She's our discharge planning nurse. Mm -hmm. planning nurse. And, and what is her role? What does she do um, in terms of discharge planning? Um, she is of great assistance. When a patient is getting discharged, the hospitalist will do most of the paperwork. Mm -hmm. Lillian will go over the medications with the patient, make sure they understand what medications they have uh, to take when they go home. And she'll also make appointments for the patients if they're required to follow up. With their primary care? Or with, with their, their primary care, with specialists. Mm -hmm. um, I also... Uh, heard that uh, there's follow-up after the patient goes home. Uh, tell me about yes. that. Yes, um, Lillian will also call if a culture result comes in or if we were um, awaiting a test result. She will call the patient with that result and make sure that they, they have the medication that they need or they have the follow-up that they require for that. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great touch, you know, touching base with the patient once they're discharged, just to make sure everything's going all right and they understood their medication and what how they're supposed to do it. It's it's priceless. It really is. Mm -hmm. I think that um, the patients probably really like that, and I, I bet the families really like that. Well, because the patient's getting a lot of information at the sure. time of discharge. A couple days later, they probably have questions <laughs> anyway. I and know I would. Yes. <laughs> so. so it's 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 amazing. It's an excellent excellent position. Mm -hmm. Well, I know you're glad to have her. Uh, now, I'm curious, do all the primary care physicians um, utilize the hospitalist services? Most of them do. There mm -hmm. are a couple that, d that admit their own patients. Mm -hmm, that still see their own patients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great information, Dr. Doran. Um, is there anything uh, that you'd like to um, talk about before we close? Um, actually, there is. I, I've worked at a, at a few hospitals before I came here, mm -hmm. and I have to say that um, frequently there's a lot of lip service given to quality and joint commission requirements. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that um, in my experience, just in the last few months with Brunswick, that it's not just lip service, that quality and patient safety means something it there. It really matters there. It does. Yes, we hear that. Um, we've heard that from many of our guests on past shows about how important quality is at Brunswick Novant Medical Center, and they truly care about the patients. So uh, I'm really happy to hear you say that. So thank you so much for joining us today. And um, I have to tell you that we're just so glad to have you on our team at Brunswick Novant Medical Center. I'm glad to be there. <laughs> All right, thanks again for coming. Thank you. Our next guest is Sarah Brown, a family nurse practitioner who just recently joined Brunswick Women's Center. 
Well, Sarah, it's so nice to have you on the show today. Thank you. And uh, I understand that you recently joined Brunswick Women's Center. That's correct. Um, August 27th, actually, was my first day. August 27th. Mm -hmm. Well, great. Well, tell us a little bit about your background and your education. I actually, I am from Duplin County and moved to Wilmington in the 1970s, then went to nursing school in Raleigh in 1970, graduated in 74, and then went to nurse practitioner school at Chapel Hill in 78 and 79. So you are from the area then. Originally you're from this area, mm -hmm. from Duplin County? Yes, mm -hmm. and most of the professional life has been in and around the Wilmington area, so mm -hmm. this has been a treat to meet more patients and staff from this area. I'm learning the area mm -hmm. as far as providers. It's been wonderful. Mm -hmm. Everybody's been very friendly and welcoming. Great, that's good to hear. Yeah, I've been pleased. Well, I'm curious, what made you uh, decide to join Brunswick Women's Center? It was an opportunity to resume seeing OB patients, and I had missed that for almost three years. I was doing GYN only. Oh, I see. And so I, um, actually two years, and so I've been really happy to get back to OB patients, and I enjoy women's health in all aspects, from mm -hmm. adolescence to geriatrics. It's very rewarding, and I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So, sounds like you're enjoying uh, being in Brunswick County. I am. I don't even mind the commute. Really? Really. It's been, it's been very nice. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that we're glad to have you here. Thank you. And um, I've had other providers from Brunswick Women's Center right. um, on our show, but just in case our viewers miss those episodes, uh, remind us who your uh, providers are at the facility, Dr. who your McCarthy, colleagues are. Um, Dr. McCarthy and Dr. Toller. Dr. Wu and Dr. Shu. <laughs> Wu, Wu and, and Shu. Shu. <laughs> They're all wonderful. I bet that gets confusing. It is interesting. <laughs> I bet. Well, let's talk about some of the services that are provided at Brunswick Women's all Center. Right. Uh, what are some of those? Um, Routine the, OB and GYN care for mm -hmm. women of all ages. Of course, the surgeons, the physicians, are the ones who do surgical procedures mm -hmm. both in the office and at the hospital. and I had the opportunity to know Dr. Toller for his four years of residency and knew Dr. McCarthy during her first year of residency in Wilmington. And so knowing their background and their skill set and learning Dr. Wu and Dr. Chu, I've been very happy to be able to be part of the group that provides an amazing service to women and families in this area. Mm -hmm. Now you said you provide women's services to mm -hmm. women of all ages. Mm -hmm. What would be the youngest you the might The youngest see? actually, um, not here, I have actually seen toddlers in the past in a pediatric setting. Mm -hmm. And my youngest GYN patient probably in the past was eight years old. Mm -hmm. But I have seen some young pre-adolescents mm -hmm. here. Okay. I think my oldest patient um, and my experience has been in her 90s. Wow. <laughs> so Almost from birth to... <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, do you have any special interest or particular focus in, um, in women's services that, that you really enjoy? There are, there are certain appeals in different ages. I enjoy working with teens and young adult women, especially with trying to encourage them to pursue protection and mm -hmm. Gardasil vaccine, that sort of thing with cervical cancer being such an issue in this part of the state. Mm -hmm. And, you know, within with young mothers and remembering what it's like to be sleep deprived and then the joys of becoming more mature and as you enter menopause. And I thought I understood that very well and I have had the opportunity <laughs> now to learn, to learn it. And then the grace that comes with the aging woman and the different issues that arise, it's just nice to be able to to maintain and stay on top of things and mm -hmm. help, hopefully, help them have better quality of, of life mm -hmm. if they have problems. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious, um, do you have your own patients? Do patients, uh, can they schedule yes. just with you? Um, and since, since I've only been there for a few weeks, mm -hmm. uh, I have just now started seeing some patients that I had met you know, in those early weeks. And it's very nice to be able to know who they are. Otherwise, it's a learning curve for all of us, for patients to learn me 
And I have had one patient ask, why did I ask so many questions? And I explained to her that's because I want to know her as a person, not just as a presenting problem or issue. Mm -hmm. And so I do ask a lot of questions about family and mm -hmm. surroundings, and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. But you have your own, um, you follow your own patients. Then. I do. I have in previous practices, and that's my understanding that we will do mm -hmm. exactly the same here. Of course, sharing um, issues with the physicians also. Right. And then if they needed further um, surgery or what have you, that right. you would refer them to one of your physicians correct. there. That's correct. Mm -hmm. well, it's kind of a one-stop shop. And it that, is. kind of nice. Really you can just take care of everything there. <laughs> everything from the GYN standpoint. Um, mm -hmm. I think right. It's, I'm, again, I can't say enough positive things about how impressed I've been with the, the demeanor and the skill set of not just the physicians but the staff. Mm -hmm. Everyone has just been exactly what I was hoping for. Oh, that's I wonderful. got very. I was very fortunate to find this. Mm -hmm. Now, do you provide DEXA scans at the? We do. We actually do. Clinic? Thank you. Um, I have a, a wonderful nurse who does those procedures, and she's. We were talking with a gentleman from a company that involves an IV medication for osteopenia and osteoporosis, oh, uh -huh. and so we were learning a lot, and she's wonderfully skilled at it. Mm -hmm. And as you know, it's a painless procedure. Right. Yes, painless I've had test. one. Um, is that something you recommend on a yearly basis? Depending on history, body style. Mm -hmm. I have even had a 20-year-old who was osteoporotic because wow. she was a, a long-distance runner and oh. was very slim. Mm -hmm. And so depending on what their previous scans have been, mm -hmm. sometimes it's fine to go more than a year. Mm -hmm. And depending on the need. Mm -hmm. I haven't had one in a while. It's probably time. <laughs> we can make you an appointment. <laughs> so are you currently accepting new patients? I am. I am, as is the practice. The entire practice is yes. open to new patients? That's my understanding, Great. yes. So if our viewers out there would like to schedule appointments, mm -hmm. how might they do that? Okay, call the office. 754-9166, it's the same number for each of the sites. We have the Leland office at Waterford, our main office in Supply, and then there's an office at Sea Trail. Mm -hmm. And what office are you primarily located? I'm primarily at the Supply office, mm -hmm. and I'm in Leland one day a week. One day a week. Mm -hmm. um, is the Leland office open every day? Or is it? it depends. Um, they're working on having a provider there most days of the week, mm -hmm. and that's depends on what the surgical need is mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. But it's my understanding at least Tuesday through Friday mm -hmm. is trying well, to have providers there. That does give uh, quite a uh, selection to um, to the women of Brunswick County because right. we've pretty much covered the whole county. You've got it as far south mm -hmm. as um, Sea Trail and Correct. then as far north as Leland so they don't have to drive too far True. to hit one of those offices. True. So. Well, great. It's been a pleasure having you on the Thank show you so today. Much. Thank I you so much. I appreciate the opportunity to meet you. And I'd love to um, catch up with you at a later date and, and talk a little nice. more in depth. That sounds like a good idea. Thank you. Great. Thanks for being here. Thanks. Our final guest today is Stephanie Heron. Brunswick Novant Medical Center's Manager of Emergency Services. Well, Stephanie, welcome back to the show. It's been a while since we've seen you. Yes, thank you, June, for having me back. It's great to see you. And for our viewers out there, though, who haven't met you, um, tell us your role at Brunswick Novant Medical Center. Sure. My name is Stephanie Heron, and I'm the Nurse Manager of Emergency Services at Brunswick Novant Medical Center. And how long have you been at that hospital, I've Stephanie? been there for 16 years. That is a long time. It is. Yeah, so you've seen it go through a lot of changes. Yes, we have seen a lot of changes in 16 years. <laughs> now, uh, I'm sure that our viewers would like to hear how you got to be where you are today and how, how you became the manager of emergency services at Brunswick. So tell us a little bit about your education and your background. I've been a nurse for 18 years. Mm -hmm. um, I started out first as an LPN. And you must have started when you were 12 years old because you yes. look like you're... <laughs> yes, I did. Thank you, June. 
So it's been a long time that I've been in nursing. I started out with my associate degree in nursing mm -hmm. and have been in emergency department for most of my years in nursing as well, well as critical care. I've been at Brunswick for 16 years and for the last six years um, have been the nurse manager there and two years ago received also my bachelor's degree in nursing. Awesome. That's an awesome uh, resume you have. <laughs> Um, well, I think that the last time you were here with us in the studio, you were still in the old facility. Yes. Correct? Well, tell me what it's like, what it's been like for you and your staff to move to that beautiful new facility and all the changes that you've had to go through. How is that for you? It is wonderful. It's, it's a beautiful facility and we could it not is. be happier to be there. We went from a 12 bed ED now to 22 beds mm -hmm. in our emergency department, which is a, a big difference for us. We're able to see more patients throughout the day. Our rooms are also set up differently and around the nurses station so we can visualize all of our patients at all times. And we also now actually have closed rooms with glass doors and TVs in the rooms mm -hmm. um, to help for the patients to be occupied, you know, during the wait time as they're waiting for their testing to come back. Mm -hmm. And it just makes it so much easier to care for our patients. And I feel that they're much more comfortable there at the new facility. Oh, I'm sure they are. And I'm sure it's an easier atmosphere for your staff to work in. I mean, it, it just seems the flow is so good. And um, just, just by way of being it's so open and they can see one another, that must help. Immensely. It does very much so and gives us easier access to our patients. Mm -hmm. It's a much easier flow to work with and I think the patients enjoy it a little bit better mm -hmm. rather than being so cramped together. Yeah, well that, that sounds great. Um, now I understand that your department, the emergency department, has received some awards for emergency services recently. Um, and I think one of them is from the American Heart Association, is that correct? Yes. Well, tell me about that one. Sure. We were recognized by the American Heart Association for a Lifeline Mission Award, and it's for our STEMI care. Our STEMIs are ST Elevation MI, which is a heart attack. Okay. So what they identified is that when we care for our patients who have heart attacks, we provide excellent care. When a patient comes in and states they have chest pain, um, we're able to get an EKG done within three minutes, identify that there has been some heart injury or issue, and then we begin transport for them because what they need at that point is they need a cardiac cath. Mm -hmm. And our goal is to have our patients out of our emergency department and on the road within 30 minutes. Wow, that's and, pretty aggressive. And then to be in the cath lab within 90. Wow. And so by meeting all of those criteria, that's what qualified you for this award. Is yes, that correct? the recognition for excellent care. Well, that's great. And I think that really speaks to the care being provided to a patient suffering from a heart attack um, and um, being seen in your emergency department. Um, so... I want to talk a little bit about that um, that experience. Now, you mm -hmm. said that um, you have those goals to meet. You get them transported within a certain time. Um, walk me through that um, what that might look like when they come in the door. What what happens first? Sure. It's very, very quick. First thing is you're going to be taken back and an EKG will be done. Mm -hmm. Once we get the EKG done, if it shows some elevation, immediately the physician's going to call up to New Hanover, usually, because that's our closest cath lab. Right. And they're going to speak to a physician there as a consult. Once they accept, we're going to start the paperwork. And in the meantime, the nurse is going to be working with the patient, putting them on the monitor, giving some oxygen, mm -hmm. giving some medications to help decrease the pain. And starting an IV, and draft, we're going to get some blood work right away, mm -hmm. but really our goal is to make sure that they can get to the cath lab and get to intervention as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. So we're going to treat pain and we're going to start transport. Mm -hmm. So it's a very quick process. Mm -hmm. And that can make all the difference in the, pay, the outcome. It, it, that is very true because what they say is that time is heart muscle. Oh, the yeah. faster you can get to intervention, and if there is a clot that's causing that pain, getting that clot removed, mm -hmm. that's going to decrease any injury to the muscle. Mm -hmm. That's what has to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's, that's an awesome award. But I think that you guys got another award for trauma services, I believe. We did. Let's talk about that one. Sure. Our trauma award was actually from our region. We belong to the region Southeastern Regional Advisory Committee, which okay. is a group of eight to nine hospitals in our area. And we were awarded a trauma award earlier in the year for the excellent service for our trauma cases. Mm -hmm. And that's voted on um, a service by looking at the care we provide to our trauma patients. Oh, wow. That's, that's interesting. Well, I, these accomplishments um, must be well received by your staff. I'm sure they feel um, really 
awesome to have that, um, have those awards. So that's a great accomplishment for you, I think, and your staff. It is. Thank you. Um, so it sounds like that you all are prepared for like any emergency that walks through the door. Am I right? Yes, we are. <laughs> well, let's, um, let's switch gears a little bit and talk about new services. Now, I understand that you've added teleneurology and telepsychiatry. So can you tell me a little bit about those services and when they might be used and how that works? Sure. It's actually, it's telemedicine. It's for both groups of services. And basically what happens if, if we have a patient that comes in with a neurological emergency, mm -hmm. um, such as a stroke. Okay. Um, once we identify that issue, then our physician will call for a consult with the specialist on call is the group of physicians that we use. Mm -hmm. They'll talk to our physician on the phone and they'll go through the consult and talk about the patient's care. We've hooked our CT reader to their CT machine so that they can receive the results and that neurologist on the other side of the phone can actually look at that head CT of the patient. Oh, then what we have is actually a webcam. It's, it's almost like a laptop. It's a very large lap laptop that's on wheels. We take it into the patient's room and the physician will then come on over this laptop and this webcam and he'll talk to the patient and do a full assessment of the patient. And so the patient can, uh, can talk with the physician on the other end from um, what was the group called? It's called Specialist on Call, mm -hmm. and it's neurologists all over the United States. Really? Yes. And so that's available 24-7? 24-7. Is that yes, correct? Ma yes, ma'am, it is. And once they decide on what that care and treatment's gonna be for the patient, they send us recommendations mm -hmm. that our physicians can then use to provide treatment. Mm -hmm. And how does the patient respond um, when this is offered? Do they? Do they like that? Uh, they that do. They do. The, the, the patients and their families, I think, have been very happy with oh, that I service. The, yeah. To have mm -hmm. a specialist there, and right away, we can have that specialist to their bedside within 20 to 30 minutes. Wow. And have them doing a full assessment. And then the family's probably able to participate too, if necessary. They can. Because oftentimes I would think that if it's a stroke, maybe the, the patient can't talk or. Sometimes, sometimes, mm -hmm. and that's why we also have the nurse in the room during those neurological mm -hmm. assessments. The nurse will assist the physician and maybe they'll help them to move limbs or maybe they'll ask yeah. questions or have them help to prep the patient so the nurse is there and available as well. Oh, that sounds like a great service. Now, have we, uh, has that been available very long? Yes, it's been about a year and a half now that we've had that service. And then recently within the last year, we've added the telepsychiatry piece. And it's actually the, it's the same company, but of course a different group of physicians, which mm -hmm. are psychiatrists. Mm -hmm. And those psychiatrists, same process um, in, the, in the same type of treatment, will take the webcam into the patient's room and they'll come and they'll do an evaluation of the patient. Mm -hmm. And then they could uh, then specify what kind of follow-up care needs to be um, received by the patient and things like that. Well, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And then the, the patient gets to stay local, doesn't have to travel to Wilmington for that consult or whatever. It's, right. it's right there in the emergency department. And not only just in the emergency department, it can be used throughout the whole hospital. Really? Any nursing unit, they can use both services, neurology and psychiatry. Wow, that's a great plus. Um, gee, I, 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 I think that that's probably one of the best things that's happened um, to Brentswood County. It's been a wonderful addition for us and for our patients. Great. Well, that's wonderful. Well, before we wrap up, is there anything else you'd like to share with our viewers about the emergency department? We're just very grateful um, for our community and for the support that's been shown to us and just really wonderful. want the community to know how much we appreciate them and all that they've done for our facility and for our emergency department and that we're there if they ever need us and be happy to provide health care for them and wonderful. for their family. Wonderful. Well, Stephanie, it's been a pleasure to see you again. It's great to have you here always. And I look forward to hear about the next awards that you all win. Thank you, June. You're welcome. Thank you for tuning in to ATMC TV's Health Watch. I hope this information was beneficial for you and your family. If you have any questions or topics that you would like to see discussed on a future show, please email them to atmctv at atmc.coop. Please visit brunswicknovant.org for more information on the hospital and local physicians. Thank you again for joining us today. Be sure to join us next time for Health Watch, 
on ATMC-TV.